You've seen what happens uh, qualitatively. Let's look at some quantitative uh, things. Um, so if we're going to consider this the cases where we have two sources in phase with equal frequency, uh, and also where they're out of phase with equal frequency. Uh, if they don't have equal frequency, then there aren't consistent locations of, of uh, constructive or destructive interference. As you saw in the video, the, the interference pattern kind of cycles around, uh, creating what are called beats. And we'll, I'll show you something. I'll, I'll let you, uh, I'll, I'll give you some tuning forks and let you play with that a little bit. Uh, you can hear what, that, what it sounds like to have beats with, uh, with sound waves. Um, <clears throat> but if two sources have equal, they're in phase with equal frequency, then the interference, type of interference, has to do with path lengths. Okay. If it takes them the, if a wave is traveling, you know, you got your two sources, and if a wave is traveling the same distance to get to some other point, these are your sources, and our waves are traveling the same distance to get to a point, and they're going to be in phase, so they'll interfere constructively. Um, but then, if the path length differs by a certain amount, then they'll interfere in different ways. So if we're here, say for example, at some other point, and say the path length differs by a full wavelength, well then they're going to be in phase again, they're going to interfere constructively. So if the path length differs by a multiple of the wavelength, then we're going to have constructive interference. Waves will be arriving in phase uh, with one another. But if the path length differs by uh, <clears throat> half a wavelength, three halves of a wavelength, etc., then they'll be arriving out of phase and there will be destruct what's called destructive interference. So constructive means they're adding, destructive means they're subtracting, canceling out. Um, so for example, for example, let's say you have two speakers that are distance d apart, and you're standing directly in front of them, one of them at distance little d uh, away. And then I want to know for what values of little d is there constructive interference. Um, and let's say they're, they're emitting sound with wavelength lambda. Uh, or if you're given frequency, you know, you, you can figure out what lambda is by saying v equals lambda f. And speed of sound we'll use is most likely going to be, we'll probably use 343 uh, meters per second. So we have constructive interference where the difference in path length equals n lambda, where n is just an integer, it's integer multiples uh, of the wavelength. So that is where our difference in path length, well, this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, square root of d, big D squared plus little d squared. So square root of big D squared plus little d squared minus d has to equal a multiple of the wavelength. So that is how you could figure out where constructive interference is. And for destructive, it's very similar. You can say uh, the same thing, the difference in path length, is equal to, uh, well, it's an odd multiple of the wavelength. So we can call that uh, 2n minus 1 over 2 times lambda. So then if n is 1, this gives us half wavelength. 
if n is 2, that gives us 3 halves of a wavelength, etc. So in both cases, n equals uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, etc. So that's how we can figure out where we have constructive and destructive interference. Um, this is for in phase, two speakers in phase. If they are out of phase, then all that happens, as we saw in the little video, is that constructive and destructive swap. So if they're out of phase, then destructive interference would occur where the distance satisfies this equation, and constructive interference would occur where the distance satisfies this equation. So that's all that happens there. <coughs> um, one particular application of, you know, well, one thing about this is that there are certain places in some venues, uh, churches, concert halls, where they try to avoid this in, in places like concert halls, but in some buildings there are places where there are like dead spots, uh, like maybe behind a pillar or something where the, you know, the sound waves are getting there, but they're getting there in such a way that you know, the sound wave from the instrument coming here versus where it reflects off a wall or something are are destructively interfering and it's really hard and or impossible to hear. Um, another application of interference or noise canceling headphones. Uh, noise canceling headphones, I mean headphones in general block out a fair amount of sound, but noise canceling headphones go a step further uh, because they they kind of pick up what sound is what what ambient sound there is in the environment and then they emit the sort of the opposite an out of phase sound that has the same properties and therefore destructively cancel out uh, whatever sound is coming in from your environment and that's how they that's how they work. <laughs>